Hello, it's Markham Torch Chief from Markham 3D, and this is part one of creating this landing gear. Now, if you want full access to this course, jump over to Gumroad or jump over to Patreon. If not, hit the subscribe button and the bell button, and a video will be coming out every week. So let's now jump over into Blender and let's start blocking on how we want this landing gear to look like. So first off, I'm gonna press numpad three to go into side view. I'm gonna press shift A, add in a mesh, add in a plane. Let's press tab into edit mode, R to rotate on the Y axis 90 degrees. So we're gonna kind of plan what this is gonna look like. So from here, let's say this here will be our base plate. Um, let's throw in a cylinder while we're at it as well. Rotate X, sorry, rotate Y 90 degrees scale. So this is where everything's gonna rotate from. It's gonna move this over a bit, there we go. From here, what we're gonna have, whoops, accidentally double duplicated. So Shift D to duplicate, rotate, and I'm gonna put it probably about here. And so we're gonna have this piece come down. And what we know is let's have kind of like pistons here, and this will control pulling up this arm up to the top. And then from here, what I might do is just go Shift D to ro uh, to duplicate, rotate. I'll put that there. We'll make that a little bit smaller, so it's sitting something like that. From here, I think we'll have another piston. So probably, yeah, actually, probably about there. And so when this one pulls up, this will pull this section up. And then we need something for the foot. So I'm just gonna go shifty on that vertice. Let's just extrude on the Y axis, control L, E to extrude down. Oops, E to extrude on the Z axis. Let's just put that into place. And so this will be kind of our foot. Now, obviously we wanna give our foot control about you know how it pivots, or do we? Or do we just wanna make it, it just kind of just sits there and then it falls wherever it falls. So I'm probably gonna guess then, we go Control L, Shift D, I reckon we're gonna have like a little piston here-ish. So something like that. So when this folds up, this will be pulled up. When we wanna fold this section, this will pull up. And automatically what that will mean is that this will tilt up to line in there. All right. Does that make sense? Maybe. Let's start putting a little bit more effort into it. So let's go Control L, Shift D, and we'll put a pin here. Shift D, put a pin here. I'm just gonna start expanding on this. Let's select this face. Um, I'm gonna do P, separate by selection, just so I've got that by itself. Let's go G to the X. And then from here, I'm gonna go into Add Modifiers. Let's go Mirror Modifiers, so we've got it on both sides. I'm gonna press, how are we gonna do this? Let's kind of make this a little bit fancier. So I'm gonna select that edge and I'm just gonna scale that up. I'm gonna put a loop cut in there with Control R, left click and then right click to put that in the center. Let's come back into side view. I'm going to move this down to about here. Let's do a Control B to do a bevel and then use the mouse wheel to scale up. And now we've kind of got this curve, just something a little bit more artistic. Let's select all that, E to extrude. There we go. All right, so that's what we got. Um, let's come back into here, Control L to select everything that's linked and we'll scale that piston out, or sorry, that pivot point. That's not too bad. From here, let's scale this one out as well. Scale on the X axis. So it sits something like that. Let's grab this face, Control L, P, separate by selection. And then we can just work on this one by itself. Let's go G to the X. Actually, did that go the right way? Nope, let's go the other way. G to the X, so it comes near. And we'll do another mirror modifier. We could do the same fancy thing we just did. So I'm gonna grab this section, scale. Let's make this one a little bit more extreme. So all the way down here. Let's do a control B to do a bevel. Something like so. Excellent. And then we can 
Let it, let's get it kind of fitting right in this gap. I mean, we can always move everything over. So let's do control L. Let's move it over to about here-ish. E to extrude. So we got something like that. So that's not bad there. Um, this plate foot. I'm not too concerned about the width of it. Um, obviously we don't want it intersecting with that top bit. We could just go scale. Sorry, let's go G to the X. P separate by selection. Select that again, add modifier, mirror modifier. And then what I might do is I might just bring it in like so. We will turn on clipping so that when it comes into contact with each other, G to the X, it can now no longer be pulled apart. Let's now just delete that internal face. I think that works out very well. And then yeah, we'll clean this section up as well. So let's now probably just create some sort of uh, piston system. So let's go shift A, add in a mesh. Let's start off with our cylinder. I'm gonna scale that. And let's just hide, well, let's select that. I can do control I to invert our selection and hide. And let's create a piston. So I'm gonna scale it in, let's scale it up on the Z axis. And this will be kind of our housing. From here, let's select this top section. I'm gonna press I to do an inset. And we'll do Shift D to duplicate that face. And I'm just gonna do GZ, just move it out of the way for a little bit. Let's select this face here, E to extrude, and we'll push that one in. We can even delete that face. So now, when we come in, we can go G to the Z all the way down, and E. And so that's gonna be our piston. So when it comes time to scaling this piston, all we need to do is kind of grab either the bottom section here, G to the, whoops, Z. We've got a small piston, we got a long piston. All right, well, we can do it the other way, however, whichever way you want. So from here, let's grab, or oh, sorry, let's create some sort of mechanism for joining it um, to another object. So for instance, let's grab maybe this bottom circle. I want to go Shift D and Z to duplicate that and move it down. Rotate on the Y axis 90 degrees. Uh, I'm just going to scale that in slightly. From here, let's maybe select the whole circle. I'm going to press C for our circle selection and middle mouse to deselect everything uh, from halfway and down and right click to complete the selection. Delete vertices. So now we've got this half loop. Sorry, let's go back. Let's do I to do an inset. So we've got a inner loop. From here, I'm gonna select one of the outside and press C. And let's just select all these pieces. I don't wanna select the middle pieces there. So let's go delete vertices. From here, we can select this E to extrude on the Z axis. There we go, like so. And we can even close that off. Now, the next thing we've gotta do is we gotta close up this area. So I'm just gonna press C and I'm just gonna select a few of these vertices. Get rid of that one. Let's press F, select a few of these and this vertice F, and then we'll do an edge loop. C, middle mouse button to deselect what we don't want and F. Next thing we need to delete this inside face. So I can just press three to go into face mode, delete faces. Let's go into side view. I'm gonna grab all this, G to the X, probably maybe here-ish, oops. And then E to extrude to about there. How's that looking? There we go, that's looking pretty good. Um, what you might do is just select all, everything that's linked with Control L and we'll just scale that in. And that is looking rather nice and I'm fairly chuffed with that. Now we've got the choice of the top. We can do it the same or we'll do it a little bit different, but we will make our lives easier. I'm just going to select this, Control L. Let's go into side view with numpad three. Shift D to duplicate, Z. Rotate with R, eh, 180 degrees, there we go. 
And then from here, I'm going to press three to go into face mode. Let's select that bottom face here. I'm going to go E to extrude like so. Oops. Let's kind of grab this piece. Let's go G to the X, move it to about there-ish, Shift D, X. And I'm going like that. I'm going to delete these two inner faces, delete face. Let's now select these two edges and press F. Select this bottom edge and I should be able to just press F to create a face, F to create a face. And will the next one work? F, it sure does. So there we go. That's how we have that. We've got our piston. Let's add some decorations to it. So first things first, what I'll do is press number two to go into edge select. Alt left click to select the edge there. I'm going to do a control B to do a bevel and we can use the mouse wheel to add bevels. So let's go about there-ish. Control B, I'm going to do a little bevel in here just because that's where the piston's going in and out. We will do the same in here so it's not as harsh. So with these pieces here, let's add a bevel with a modifier. So let's go into add modifiers on the right hand side, bevel. And we'll make it the limit method to be angle. There we go. And we will make, let's just make two segments just to make it that extra round there. And so now that should have beveled all our little pieces. Lovely. I do have a feeling that this piece up here is a little bit thick. So we might, what we might do is I'm going to press into vertex mode. Let's box select this side. Let's box select this side. And I'm going to scale along the x-axis. Just bring it in a smidgen. There we go. That's looking a bit better. Now we've got all these harsh lines everywhere. What I can do is I can press space to search or F3 to search, or if you're on a laptop, Fn F3. And I'm just going to type in shade smooth. There we go. Look at that. That's very quick, very simple piston. 